Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim. I have been, um, boy, it got really cold. I was out then back for just time to get cleaned up. Um, there have been some sleepless light nights, so thank you to everyone who has been praying for me. But man, the frost took over and, uh, and we're back at it again. Hallelujah. If you do not know the gospel, it is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Christ died for our sins, was buried, he conquered, held death in the grave, and on the third day rose from the dead. The nanosecond, the instant you believe, what do you believe? The gospel. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God, God the Son, always existed. We believe in the eternally self-existent God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you don't know the gospel, this is the most important message you will ever hear because time is of the essence. So Jesus left glory, laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross to pay the debt for our sins, yours and mine all sufficient once and for all for our past, present, and future sins. He died as the scripture states, was buried. He did conquer hell, death, and the grave. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And when you believe on him, we call it the ABCs of salvation. Admit you're a sinner in need of a savior, in need of saving, and believe on the son of God who was perfect, never sinned, and shed his blood. His blood paid the debt for our sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 21, for God made him, him is Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Our sin, just like the priest in the Old Testament would lay their hands, or the people would lay their hands on the head of the animal before it was sacrificed because the life is in the blood and there had to be a debt paid for the sin. Jesus, once and for all, our sin, just as they saw that as a transference, an imputation of sin to pay the debt for their sin, but it was once for all. Our sin was imputed to him and his righteousness imputed to us. And we received that, we call it the free gift of salvation, when we believe, pistuo is the word, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When you believe on him, his death, burial, and resurrection, you are born again. And so the ABCs of salvation, we say, admit you're a sinner in need of a savior, believe on the son of God and his redemptive finished work on the cross. He cried out to tell us die. We translate that it is finished, or it could be translated. It is complete. The debt is paid in full once and for all. There is no more need for animal sacrifices for anything that we could do because we couldn't save ourselves nor keep ourselves saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, for by grace, God's unmerited favor. Are ye saved through faith? Faith in who? Believe in who? Be firmly persuaded in who? Trust in whom? Jesus and his redemptive work on the cross of Calvary. For by grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. It is nothing on our part. Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And then we call it C, call upon the Lord to confess him. The Bible says that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if we confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth and is justified, just as if we never sinned, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we believe, we're justified, we're born again, and dwell with Holy Spirit, saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. Boom! It's a done deal. Event. Hallelujah. Not a process. And when you think that it's what you do, we can't save ourselves. 
Holy Spirit does that regenerating work, we believe and we're born again and we have eternal security in Christ. Check out Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 30, Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14. Again, the scriptures are in the description box. So, oh, that's the good news. Now, I want to talk about, I want to give a news update as to what's going on. If you've been watching, you know that Vice President Pence and our, um, what do you call him? Uh, the head guy, the, the Surgeon General, he got on and they were making speeches. And some people think that, I, that I'm contradicting myself. I am not contradicting myself and I can see how some people think that. I have support. I believe that President Trump will prevail, and I have supported that. That said, I only worship the Lord. And I have said I do not agree with any man, any woman, any nation, league of nations that divide the land of Israel. The deed is in the Bible. I will not support anything that divides the land of Israel. When it comes to elections in my country, I prayerfully pray and I, I vote, I do vote according to biblical principles the best that I can. We know that no candidate is perfect and we are living in an interesting time. You know, I say this, at the end of a dispensation, we're, we're at the end of a dispensation, this dispensation of the church age. We are under, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Over 200 verses in the Bible. Hallelujah. Believe on the Lord Jesus. Believe on the Son of God and his finished redemptive work on the cross, as I've outlined, and you, his death, burial, and resurrection. Boom. Done deal. You're born again. Solo fide, baby. Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. Um. When we come to the end of a dispensation, this end of this 2,000 year period, and the next period will be the tribulation. The church will be, ra hallelujah, raptured out of here. And we see that approaching quickly. There's going to be a suddenly, and, and it's upon us. So, um, anyway, we, um, it's not like, I've used this illustration even in sermons, it's not like you step over a log and now you're into a new dispensation. There's a transition. So while we do our best, we keep our focus where it needs to be. On I shared earlier Philippians 3.14 on our prize. We want to be renewed in our minds daily and washed in the purity of the truth of God's word. And so we're going to see things that are, it's like, the transitionary period and we are seeing what the bible has prophesied in the end times that's all i'm going to say here because i don't want to be cut off and i want to share this on every forum that i can now that being said what's breaking today i will not take it that's what i'm going to say i have shared other videos i have gone into dreams that i have seen and that's all i'm going to say I will not. I will not. I don't care who you get saying and demonstrating. I'm not doing it. Period. And I'm, I have never called that the mark of the you know what. But I have said it is the precursor. It is setting the stage in the scenario. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing what the Bible says is going to happen in the end time with this. I'm going to call it unity governments as they come together. We're even seeing it with currency. I anticipate that even before we are raptured, that we may see a one monetary system, which I believe will be digital or crypto. We're seeing the shifting. If anybody's been watching what's going on there, even there have been reports that even when they come out with a stimulus package again, and they may or may not, I don't know, that it will be uh, crypto that it will actually be crypto and getting people aligned with a new monetary system, which China has. Um, but I do want to share a few things from the news today. Rising per, in endtimesheadlines.org, rising persecution in China has caused um, more pastors to go in hiding. And so we want to continue praying and a rising persecution in other nations, the same thing. It's it's upon us. Listen, we have been blessed in the United States of America. I still have Sunday services. I, I, I'm still preaching without a you-know-what on and, 
and I, I'm just doing what I need to do. And God has given me favor and I give all the glory to God. Um, I, I hear people all the time, we're so persecuted. However, we have brothers and sisters who are losing their lives and being tortured. And I pray for them all the time. And when I see that, I cry out, even so, come Lord Jesus. Well, we want, and we do want to see people saved. I get it. But oh, when you hear the reports of what's happening in um, times of Israel. Now, this is interesting with the normalization plan. Sudan. So while all this is going on with the governments and the whole, you know what's going on in the world. Um, I was talking to my twin, Rosemary, yesterday. I said, Rosemary, have you noticed that? I'm not hearing anything about anybody having the flu by this time this year. She said the same thing. Really interesting. Pay attention to what's going on. In any event, Sudan revokes citizenship of a top Hamas leader. Now that's significant. That is going to stir, stir tensions like we... It's going to stir tensions, let me tell you that. And why did they revoke? revoke? Because the Sudan is signing normalization. How will all this pan out? How will it pan out with the prophecies of Ezekiel and Isaiah? And, and we're seeing the prophecies align. Well, time will tell. And how much of it will we, as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, see? Because I'm telling you, suddenly, oh, hallelujah, that Trump is going to sound. And it is going to, woo, we're going to. We're going home, hallelujah, in that suddenly, praise God. And then in NBCnews.com, they're reporting that this Russian hack has infiltrated and impacted, Microsoft is, over 40 top companies. Brothers and sisters, this is all moving at, they call it warp speed, it's moving at an alarming pace. And I did hear Vice President Pence, I couldn't watch, I couldn't watch, I couldn't watch when the Surgeon General got on there and the things they were saying, and even Mike Pence, and um, I know some people will get upset with me for that, but I just couldn't do it, because I'm not gonna do it anyway. And um, Fauci, I heard a little bit of his, I, I just, I couldn't watch it. And and these people that I know work with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and George Soros, and I, listen, I've reported on all this before. I'm just, this is all truth. And so I'm just reporting the words of the vice president was, we are rounding the corner. We are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm telling you, I said, yes, but not to what you think. That it's one side on what you think. What I see is the rapture. Soon and very soon, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18 is going to be a reality for the body of Christ. The Lord himself will descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah! That trump is going to sound suddenly and I can only share what I've experienced in my dreams. It is so quick, I can't even put into words what it is. But oh, glory to God, we know at that moment, we know what's happening and the joy, the, the shalom, the peace. Woo, hallelujah. I'm going to declare in Jesus' name, it is finished. I want to give you a blessing before I let you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you and his shalom, his peace, perfect, whole, complete, nothing lacking, nothing missing, be yours in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah, I pray and I bless you. Shalom, shalom. Remember, God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. We trust in the Lord. Hallelujah.